What is up, MFers? Welcome back to another butt puckering video out on some really sketchy Nebraska ice. I'm out here today with Cole, the camera guy right there behind me, and we are doing a little bit of ice fishing. We're gonna do something a little bit different today than we've been doing. If you guys are new to the channel, welcome to Melican Fishing. On the channel, basically I go fishing every day. I put myself in some precarious situations to hopefully catch a whole bunch of freaking donks, and I don't know, we have some fun and try to teach you guys some shit along the way. I'd love if you go and subscribe right now. That'd be amazing. So if you guys see my videos in the past, you know that uh, I go over to SC Fish Keeping, Zach's house, and he has like the best assortment of aquariums of anyone probably I don't know, in the damn world probably. And so Zach has a bunch of native fish species. He's got some brand new ones actually that I will show you again today. But he said there is one species of fish that people keep asking about that we want to go and catch and put in one of his tanks. Now we're actually fishing a brand new lake that we've never been to yet, but we know that the species of fish that we want to catch that we want to take over to Zach's house and put in his aquarium, we want to catch as a pet fish is over there. So we're going to get to drilling some holes in the sketchy ice. I'm going to leave you guys in the dark a little bit on what species of fish that is. But it looks like out here, you can see the ice, pretty clear, good looking ice, probably three inches or so. Just a little bit sketchier on the bank, but pop some holes, Let's see if we can catch some coal. Let's do it, man. Let's do it. It is a balmy nine degrees outside right now. So we're gonna go gloves, at least until it's fishing time. These are like some badass gloves I bought. They're waterproof, windproof, supposedly. But most of all, I can't fish in them. So until it's time to fish, we're doing it. We got some, some trees up over here. You can see, little tree guy, tree guy, tree guy trees. There's Cole. He's trying to stay out of view, so I'm going to get Cole on video. Super thick out here. Three inches. No problem. All right. Time to make it rain, Coleslaw. Yep. Yep. Checkers are us. 12 feet. Beauty. How are we doing in here, guys? Oh, they're not too dead. Perfect. Dude, I'm excited for this because Zach doesn't have any of these in his aquariums. And it's like, literally, it's the only fish that he does not have, I think. I mean, he's got, obviously, there's thousands, if not millions of species of fish. But he doesn't have any of these in his native aquariums. I think it's one of the only native fish he doesn't have. So hopefully we can catch one. I'm not going small to start. I'm going with a, a bigger Swedish nipple here, as we call them, with a little wax worm on it because I want to keep the little bluegills and stuff off of it. We can catch bluegill on that, but we're going to try to catch something a little bit bigger to start. Come get it, bud. Some bitch flew up and got it. He's swimming away, though. He's no longer interested, and now I spooked him. Got him. Oh, cool. I have a fish. I have one on. Oh, hell yes. It's actually a big, big blue head. I said I was trying to keep the, uh, the little bluegills off. Um, that's a pretty impressive size bluegill right there. He came up off the bottom and freaking smoked it. He freaking got Swedish nipple hook down to Narnia there. Dang, that's impressive. That's a big bluegill. As I told you guys, we're uh, we're fishing for a pet fish today, but we're gonna try to learn some stuff along the way. The pet fish thing is is something that's kind of just out here doing for fun. Obviously, it's cool to add badass fish species to uh, aquariums and stuff. We're gonna try to teach you some stuff about how to catch some of these guys as well, but. Not a bad way to start. Probably about a uh, eight and a half, nine inch bluegill. Tall guy, not a long guy. Sweet. Well, that was easy. That was the second one I saw too. You got any on there? Sweet. Do you wanna, here you go. Oh, okay. <laughs> That's okay, most of those are dead anyway and I got a 400 pack or whatever they are. Eat it, bud. Damn, dude, they are like, they're hot. Come on, bud, eat it. Several buddies on the screen. All right, that's it, I'm losing the spoon. I just threw my, my little puck of waxies over to Cole and it exploded into a, a million pieces. But luckily we got the old bulk pack over here too. Jesus, Cole. All right. We're going small. I keep having them come and look at my, my little spoon guy and not eat it. So I'm thinking maybe, maybe they want small her. Little baby dick size. We call this the coal. <laughs> coal. Get them. Get them, coal. Got a northern on? What do you have? Was it really? Damn! 
Cole just lost a bass over there. I thought he was just dicking around with me. Ah, well catch his ass, Cole. Don't dick around with him. Oh God, I think we just got a little baby guy. Look at that dude. That is not what we're after today. But he's so pretty. Screen's lit. Hashtag lit. Got him, Cole. Tickles dick over there. Look at you with the bluegill, Cole. Shoot. Not what we're after. Not what we're after. This one might be though. Oh, he broke my line. Really? Yes. That was definitely a, a little bit better fish. God, I'm stupid. Should have checked my line. All right, we're mixing it up. We're going with the little VMC hair flag guy because I'm stupid and broke off my little purple one. Check your line, folks, especially when it's 10 degrees and you're using three pound fluorocarbon. Oh, he's horny for it. Ah! Cole's hooked up. Cole's hooked up. Flippity flop. What has he got? Oh, God. That's a tanker gill. I'm going to let this blue gill just make out with my jig down there quick. Check out what old slob just caught. Show it to him, Cole. Look at this. Give it to him. Giants only. Bigs only, sorta. Big old yellow gill. Not blue. He's yellow a, gill. Yellow gill. Interesting. It's a hybrid. Yep. One of those guys. Made that up. Not what we're after. It's not. No. Okay, guys. If you're not uh, really having any idea what the hell I'm looking at, we're talking about seeing fish on our flasher. Here is our flasher. What we're talking about right in front of us. It's 12 feet deep right here. That is the bottom of the lake right there. That is a fish. That is also. That's my bait right there. These are tree branches up here, so they're causing some interference. But we're gonna drop down, and usually what you do is you drop it right above the fish, so you can barely see my little Swedish nipple there. But we're just gonna jiggle it right in their face, real light. And when there's none on the screen like there is right now, I like to give it a couple heavier pops, like so. So there's one up a little higher, and he's chasing it. He's right on me. And he got it. That simple. And he's another decent sized fish. Look at that, big old fat jillion. That's cool when that actually works. So basically when you're looking at the screen, you're looking at it like a, a vertical screen. So even though it's round, you're picturing it as something that is syndrilical, I guess, straight up and down, because it's shooting a cone straight down into the water. And even though it's curved, I used to have that vertical pixel graph, you're thinking of it as straight up and down. So we got another fish on the screen right there. Actually, you can see that's a fish right there. We need to get back down to him. Obviously, if there's a fish there, you want to get down to them. But yeah, that's what we're looking at on the old screen. For those of you that have never iced fish, or every time you're watching me ice fish, you're wondering what the hell I'm talking about, a flasher, a screen, or whatever. And I'll do this more moving forward too, but definitely is the deal. You can't really ice fish without one of these because otherwise you're just dropping randomly in holes and hoping a fish swims by. If you can't lift your bait up above that fish or know when there's one right on you to shake it in his face, tough, tough way to catch them. Cole's got one. What are they biting on, Cole? Swedish nips. Flippity flop. What has he got? A new species. Look at Cole go. That's a fat dude. He's been eating some. Last one I just lost. Dude, that's not a bad fish at all. Not quite two pounds. No, he's not, but he's thick. He wants to think he's going to be two pounds at some point. Flay him up, Cole. Flay yeah, him up. I was going to say that you might. Uh... LMB catch and cook. That's right. That's not a bad fish at all, homie. Good work. Ben Millican belly pat. Yeah, you gotta slap him on the belly. Teaching Cole all different types of good things about fishing. He's gonna be an expert before you know it. You gotta pat him on the belly, throw a drum across the lake. Here comes a guy that likes it. Oh, that's big. That's a large headed bass. Come here, bud. Oh, he's so wrapped. There we go. Come here, bud. Look at this, Cole. Another one of these guys. Cole just caught a yellow bluegill, and I caught a yellow largehead. Swedish nips in his face. I bowed up on him, and I was like, nope, that ain't a blue gal. It's also not a so that kind of sucks. But that's okay. Freaking badass time on light tackle. It's always fun when your rod's freaking, what is this guy, 26 inches, and the bass is over half the length of the rod. A little bit different than open water. If you've never done it, 
make sure you're on some safe ice, but uh, ice fishing can be really fun. Oh God, that's big. Dude, help me out Cole, this is huge. It feels like a catfish. Woo. Dude, I lifted up on him and he is not small. I think he's in the tree too. Oh yeah, he's definitely in the tree. I think he's a catfish. Big? Yeah, he's definitely in the tree. Damn it. He was up high. I saw this giant mark come in and then Damn. I bowed up on him and he took off. Freaking sucks, man. Dang it. Leave it slack for a second, I suppose. Mm -hmm. I don't know if he's even still on there. God, he was big. Like that was the biggest fish I bowed into probably this year through the ice, trout included. There we go. That's a little bit better. A little bit of an improvement. Oh yeah, that's what we're after. You bet. Dirty little crap head. Hey, those are, those are the edible variety coal. It's not a bad one, a little probably 11 inch guy. And that right there is actually the species that we were taking over to Zach's house. We're gonna have to catch a couple crappie. He does not have any crappie out of all the fish species he has. He doesn't have any crappie, so boom. Get this guy in the bucket and I got a way to keep him alive the whole time while we're fishing, so let's do that. This might take a second. Yeah, dude, definitely glad I got these waterproof gloves because I just filled this bucket halfway up or a little bit more than halfway with the damn Gatorade bottle. But yeah, we got this little bubble box, portable aerator pump. Mr. Crappy's in there just loving life with some of his little minnow buds. We're gonna turn this guy on. There we go, aerator cracking. Then we go back to catching, hopefully. That one just crushed it. I think he's a crappie too, because he was further up. Oh yeah. Got ourselves a crap coal. Crappy crap. God, he was horny for it. So horny for the nips. They're pretty. They look cool in a tank. Now he's dead. Killed him. I'm just kidding, he's fine. Just a baby. He might actually be cool in a tank too, but I think it's 10 inches to keep him here, so we ain't, we ain't keeping him. Ooh, he's got a buddy though that came up with him that looks pretty good size. Oh, yes sir, yes sir, that's a better one too. Oh, you bet, that's a big old crap. Doubled up? The school came through? That's the biggest one we've caught today. That's a dadgum hammer slogging and look at Cole. Another crap. craps. Here's what I think we're gonna do, Cole. We're gonna keep these because we can keep, I think, 20 yep. total, 10 a piece. Okay. And we're gonna eat some of them if they die. And the bigger ones, hopefully, we're gonna take to Zach's. Sounds good. I think he said two or three, maybe. So. A little catch and cook. A little catch and cook action, I think, Cole. <laughs> Those crappie look dead, but they're not. They're just like chilling. Good job. Look at you, Cole. God, might be a crap. What does Cole have? It's a good crap. God dang it. Zach's gonna be so happy with us. These dudes are gonna look so cool in the tank. And honestly guys, we're gonna keep fishing. We're not just gonna like catch these two. We actually, we drove a while out to this lake. It's not close to home to find this super safe three inch ice. We're gonna have some cool little, little native fish for his tanks though. Those are gonna be awesome. I think crop are gonna have cool feeding opportunities too. So. Dude, Is it quite you haven't been over there. No, Sick, cool. yeah. That's a big mark. Got his ass. Got his ass. Actually, it was two marks. Oh, another bass fish. You bet. Whew. He swallowed it to his damn tail. Hopefully, we can get this guy off without killing him. Oh, no, he's good. Just hooked in the top of the mouth. Look at that, though. He freaking... He wanted that Swedish nip. Bass love nipples. Heard it here first. 
Got a deep. Oh, Cole's hooked up over there. We got a fire bite going on here today, guys. A little fire bite. What do you got, Coleslaw? That's a big old bluegill. Thanks, son. Is that an MA? A master angler? Let's turn it in and get a certification. Then I can put on my internet forum handles that I've caught 26 MAs this year. That guy even got it. Fighter guys. Hi, bud. That old Mr. Confused Finicky down there and then his buddy came in and freaking clobbered it. The more we throw in here, the better chance we have that two will be alive, right? That guy's big. Oh, yeah. You bats. Just a different creature when you bow into one of these yellow, yellow largemouth, man. We got hybrids out here. Pretty, pretty yellow guy. Sweet. Not a big one, but chunky. Chunky? Fights hard. Perfect. And like the break offs and whatnot. He's gotta be bluegill. Look at my fucking screen, dude. I mean, I wouldn't hate it if they were crappies. Ooh, big bluegill. That's the biggest one I caught today. Big old meaty one. He, he's Mr. Bulbous guy. He's getting kept. Put the damn bluegill in here. It's impossible for him to die. What you got, Cole? Whew. Whew. No, me too. I don't know if it's big. Nope. You ween. Throw him in the bucket, Cole. If we're going to eat some of these. Freaking was sitting in his mouth. Definitely all gills. Good ones. Oh, what's up, fish? Woo! Found a crap hole. You ever seen a crap hole? I couldn't tell if it's just trees the whole way down or fish stacked up. Kept going down and it stopped and then it was in a fish's mouth. And another one. Maybe they're just this freaking loaded in here. I don't know. This is also not a crappie. <laughs> Yes, it is. It's just a big one. I did find the crap hole, Cole. Crap hole, Cole. Dude, these two had just inhaled it. All right, just wrapping up for today. Um, our plan of attack for today was to catch like two or three crappie to take to Zach's to keep for pets and maybe catch a handful of other fish as well and get out of here. But we've been out here for a while now. We were smashing fish the whole freaking time between bass, crappie, bluegill, and big ones of all species. Decent sized bass. And I think I got broken off by a catfish too. So we love to fish. We don't really want to go inside when they're biting this freaking good. It's been the best bite of the year so far. But um, we are having one problem. We noticed since the very start, the crappie are like dormant pretty much when you put them in the bucket. We have a bucket full of water, got the aerator going, super cold water straight out of the lake, and they're still just all floating there. Now they seem alive though, so I'm not really sure if they're they're completely dead and out of it, but once you put them in a bigger tank, maybe they have some more room to swim around, they'll kind of come back to life a little bit. But the good news is if they don't survive, we're just gonna clean them up and eat them. We're gonna hurry up though and get to Zach's house, hopefully keep some of these guys alive because I think they're gonna be awesome pets. And regardless, we got probably 10 or 12 in the bucket. We're gonna end up eating quite a few as well. So we'll see you there. We did decent though. So we made it to Zach's house. We want to put these crappie, again, we're not sure if they're alive. We, we just dipped a couple up. They look mostly alive, but we want to put them in some similar temperature water just to make sure there's not a big shock to them, right? Yep. yep. The most lively. Alive. Yeah, the most lively ones, which is none of them. They're all just like frozen, it looks like, but put them in the water and they seem to be super happy about the better water. I almost wondered if it was like an air bladder issue. These guys don't look great. Were they pretty deep when you pulled them up? 12 feet. Not too bad. No. If you kind of try and get the water kind of flowing for them back over their gills. I tried to revive a few fish that way. Loose sensitivity in your fingers while you do it. They're just a little out of it. I don't know, because like they immediately started doing that. Yeah. Let me pull them straight out of the lake and put them into the bucket. Let's just keep trying. 
This guy's like super lively. Well, he's good to go. Let's do it. Let's come back and see what the tools are like. Yeah, we'll grab some crappie on the way out. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's so scary. Alright, so we gave these guys a chance to kind of see if they would turn upright because we think it's a swim bladder issue. The crappie are kicking, they're moving around, they just couldn't stay down. So we went and fed some other fish, we just came back, and it looks like you guys might not be able to see them with the way the water's coming, but there's at least three over there that are doing just fine. So this actually worked. Yeah, these guys are swimming around, they're working on going down, I mean they are diving right now. So we'll, we'll grab the ones off the top and we're going to take those home and, and fillet them up. But the ones that live seem to be doing pretty well. Yeah. Those look cool in some tanks. I didn't know what to expect. I had no when idea. We walked away. <laughs> no, they were they were looking like these guys, and now all of a sudden we have at least four of them are down. Yeah. And so you got two there. There's one over there. That one's swimming. Those two, two, over, two there. over there. So sweet. Call it success. I would. We now have crappie. <laughs> Freaking winter wonderland out here, Cole. Today actually turned into a uh, pretty successful day on the water. I mean, we caught the shit out of every species of fish, had a good time doing it too, and then we really exceeded our expectations as far as catching some of the fish we were after, which was those crappie. We were hoping to catch one or two to take home to Zach. Uh, we ended up taking home like 12 to Zach, and then several of them didn't look like they were gonna live, and then after we gave them a while to kind of get used to that water and uh, get their swim bladder right and everything, a bunch of them ended up living. So he has some new pets. We took some of the ones out that didn't make it so hot. We're gonna fillet those guys up and, uh, we're not gonna do a catch and cook in this video, but rest assured, we are going to eat some damn delicious crappie tonight. But uh, thanks so much for watching this video. If you guys wanna see more of these catching a pet fish, fish feeding type videos, please comment down below. Also need you guys to comment some names. We need names for these new crappies. I'm sure Zach will as well. I'll, I'll link his channel down below if you kinda wanna see how this crappie are doing more on a day-to-day -day basis like I always tell you guys. But um, yeah, for me and Cole, catch you guys soon. Out of here.